We get a very fun blend of a slate on Tuesday where we've got both high upside pitchers and a lot of good value plays at hitter. And we can get to the fun batters we want while also spending up a pitcher, which is not something we get super, super often. So I'm pumped about that uh, synergy for today. Pumped to dive in to Tuesday's slate. So let's dive on in now and get you ready for what should be a fun night of MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire here to break down Tuesday's 11 game main slate with locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. The one weather note on this slate is that there is a slight chance of thunderstorms in Cleveland for the Guardians and the A's. They should still be good to play there. Worth noting that the uh, weather is at least a bit dicey. So check back on the timeline for the rain in Cleveland later on. We'll dive into those pitching options, those low salaried batters, and much more here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts later on today. Love PGA DFS preview for the Travelers Championship, another designated event. So a lofty, lofty field for this week at the Travelers. We'll break down the course, let you know which golfers we're zeroing in on for this week and get you ready for another fun week of PGA DFS. All right here in the same podcast feed, the number fire daily fantasy podcast. Feed. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, Leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify as well. Hit a homer with $5 Dinger Tuesdays on FanDuel Sportsbook. Each Tuesday, all customers will get $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit by both teams when you place a $25 to hit a home run wager on MLB games. And the best part about Dinger Tuesdays is even if your bet loses, FanDuel will pay you $5 for every home run. There's no better place to bet America's pastime than America's number one sportsbook. Head over to your FanDuel account or download the FanDuel Sportsbook app to pick your home run hitter. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. Max bonus $25. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or tax next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. In Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, one eight seven seven eight hope and wire text open Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Tuesday main slate. Nathan Eovaldi comes in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is 11000 flat, followed by Framber Valdez at 10-9. We got Clayton Kershaw at 10-7, followed by Garrett Cole at 10-6. Marcus Stroman comes in at 10-3 with George Kirby also at 10-3. Bailey Ober, 96, with Mackenzie Gore at 91. And then Jordan Montgomery, Dylan Cease, Aaron Savalli, Justin Verlander, and Ben Lively are the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, my favorite guy of that bunch tonight is going to be Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw's salary is 10-7, and that is kind of high. But again, I think with all the value batter, that's not going to matter too much. So we can go to Kershaw and feel good about here. Kershaw is on the road facing the Angels, so not a super far trip for them. And... Angels haven't hit lefties as well as I thought they would entering this year. And I think it opens up the window to feel pretty secure in Kershaw. Obviously, Kershaw has had an elite season. Across 14 starts, he has a 3.26 skill interactive ERA with a 2.95 actual ERA. So good peripherals and good results. His strikeout rate is 29% with a 14.8% swinging strike rate. The bat of ball data for Kershaw has been solid too. And he hasn't had many bad starts overall. We've seen Kershaw get the quality start bonus on FanDuel in nine out of 14 outings. He still has not gotten double digit strikeouts yet, but he's been very close with nine in, uh, I think, three or so games. The Angels do have a 24% strikeout rate against lefties. So you combine that together, and I've got Kershaw projected for 7.2 strikeouts tonight. 
That is the highest number on the slate. And again, salary may not matter as much here as it typically would. So I can feel good about Kershaw there. I'll put him first, feel solid about that. So even though I thought the Angels might be pretty tough on lefties earlier on this year, I still do think that Kershaw is in a good enough spot to rank him first for tonight. I'm going to put Garrett Cole second. I like his situation more than Kershaw's uh, because Cole is at home against the Mariners. They're a high strike, higher strikeout team than the Angels, and their WRC Plus is just fine at 100. So from an overall like situation perspective, matchup, and venue, I prefer Cole. I just haven't seen as much from Cole lately. His strikeout rate this year is down to 26%, and it's been decreasing in the more recent games. We've seen Cole throwing fewer changeups his past six starts, and in those six starts, his strikeout rate is down to just 25%. Now, Cole has faced some lower strikeout teams in that time, and the overall quality of opponent has been pretty high. It's just not going to inspire you on a slate where we have Valdez, Kershaw, Ivaldi, all these other really fun pitching options available to us. But Cole did have eight strikeouts against the Mets last time out. Uh, that's a tough, low strikeout matchup, and he fully came through for one of his better starts we've seen in a while. So it's definitely possible for Cole to still rack up that kind of game. I would not blame you if you want to put Valdez above Cole, because I think Valdez is pretty fun as well. Uh, Valdez facing the Mets. So again, low strikeout matchup, but he is at home as is Cole. So I'm going to go with Cole second, but if you want to go Valdez second above Cole, I think that's very defensible too. So my top pitchers for tonight are going to be Clayton Kershaw one, I'm going to go Garrett Cole to Framber Valdez three, and then Nathan Eovaldi also in consideration. Uh, just not quite as high in him as I am on the other guys for tonight. As far as the value play goes, you have two options. You can take a better pitch up and a pit better pitcher in a tough matchup, or go with the guy who may be a bit flukier, but is in a very much plus spot at home. I'm going to take the easy matchup personally, but we'll talk about the other guy in things to watch later on. The plus matchup belongs to Ben Lively. He is at home against the Rockies, and we always want that matchup. The Rockies have a 91 WRC plus against righties with a 35% fly ball rate and a 25% strikeout rate. Their plate discipline numbers are kind of bad all around, which means guys can go pretty deep in games against them, especially when the game is not a course field. And Lively hasn't fallen off yet. We're up to six starts on him as a starter now, and he has a 3.79 skill interactive ERA with a 25% strikeout rate and just a 35% hard hit rate allowed. Lively did have two bad starts, but he still went deep in both those games, and that's kind of a huge appeal for him in DFS, is that they will give him a large pitch count, especially now that the Reds rotation is kind of banged up. So they need guys to go deep in games, and Lively can be that guy. I'm still not sure how sustainable this stretch for Lively is because he did not show this in the minors. He was not dominant when he was in the KBO, but the sample on Lively being a quality starter keeps on expanding. So the peripherals have remained solid. You put him in a plus spot at home. I think we can use him here at $8,000. Now, the question is, will we need those savings? I don't think so, but you can use different aspects of a stack if you use that. So I like the Reds. They got a lot of value plays. Maybe you get to all the studs instead uh, by using Ben Lively. So Lively, to me, the top value at pitcher for tonight, a guy I do feel good about. Speaking of those Reds, let's dive into stacks now because this is the best park factor for hitting in the slate by a wide margin. So I could be in mark against Lively as a pitcher, but it does also boost up their offense. So let's talk about the Reds offense as a top stack of the night. The Reds are facing Noah Davis, and that's the guy we can stack against. Davis is starting in place of Kyle Freeland, who uh, had a stomach bug. So Davis called up at the last minute to start. And we saw Davis in the majors earlier on this year. He had a 6.17 ERA there. He's had some better peripherals in the majors and a small sample, but the results were in line with expectations based on what he had done down in AAA. In AAA this year, uh, Davis has a 6.32 XFIP with not enough strikeouts. And he's also letting up too much hard contact down there. Now, Davis is not a big fly ball pitcher, which is a big plus because Great American Ballpark, that can get you in trouble really fast. But he's also not a big ground ball guy. He gets a, he lets up a lot of line drives, which is why the hard hit rate is so high. Everything else lines up really well for stacking. 
The Reds WRC plus against righties is up to 98, creeping up every single day. So I think we should be on them here. And again, we're getting them at a time where they're pretty healthy right now because they got just got Joey Votto back and Votto had a huge home run last night. But also Jake Fraley just came off the IL. And I think he's kind of the big part of stacks here because against righties, Fraley has a 203 ISO with 11 stolen bases. So you get two sources of upside for $3,100. And I'm going to find that pretty hard to turn down. TJ Friedel, kind of the light version of Fraley, couple steals, a little bit of power for $2,900. So uh, that works. Votto himself, his salary, $2,600. Hit the ball okay in his uh, rehab stint in the minors. But again, that big home run last night. So the Reds are pretty easy to team to stack tonight. I prefer to get to some of the higher salary guys. But Fraley, I think, is a focal point. Friedel, definitely a great option. Votto is more the one where I'm like, you know, if I need the salary savings. Whereas Friedel and Fraley are kind of legit core plays for me within Red Stacks for tonight. Number two stack is the Guardians. They are not a team I enjoy stacking because they tend to be very low upside, but they face the A's this week, which means I've got to make an exception, and that exception does begin tonight. The Guardians are facing Luis Medina here, who is still trying to find his groove. We're up to eight outings on Medina in the in the majors now, and in that time, he's let up a 46% hard hit rate, and that number was in the 70s in his most recent start. That was against the Rays, who are about as different from the Guardians as possible, but it's still not ideal regardless. And all leads to a 5.80 expected ERA for Medina. His actual ERA is 7.55. So the starting pitching aspect is a plus matchup for the Guardians. And as we always discuss here on the show, after the starting pitcher, you get to face the A's bullpen, who is still really rough and still struggling. So you can score runs the entire game. That's pretty rarely the case in MLB DFS. So the Guardians would be a no-brainer if they were a better offense. I do still think they are going to be near the top of our list regardless, just because this matchup is too good for us to pass up. And there are at least enough guys here to get us to a full stack. Obviously, that's Jose Ramirez begins with him. Josh Naylor, totally fine. I don't mind Bo Naylor lower in the order. They just called him up uh, recently. Hit for plenty of power in the minors. He can steal some bases too. There are some other guys who we can feel okay with in this lineup, but to me, it really does revolve around Ramirez and Naylor, and then maybe you get to Bo Naylor as well within those stacks. Get the Naylor stack uh, for the Guardians for tonight. Finally, the Brewers are a hard team to read. Uh, they've had some key hitters in and out of the lineup all year long. I have no idea how good they are, but again, low salaries here, plus matchup, makes it pretty easy to get on them for tonight. They're facing Ryan Nelson, and Nelson's a guy we can stack against. For the season, he has a 5.30 ERA. He's struggling to get strikeouts, but also lighting up a lot of hard contact, which is not the kind of combination that you want. Nelson has been throwing more changeups his past nine starts, and the changeup does seem like a pretty good pitch for him. But even with more changeups, the peripherals still underwhelming that time specifically. His skill interactive ERA is 5.43 with a 46% hard hit rate. The strikeouts do go up a tad in the sample, but not enough to erase all the hard contact. Nelson has had good outings, but they've primarily been in super, super plus matchups. He did struggle also at home against the Rockies, which should have been a good spot for him. So now you put Nelson on the road against an offense that it's kind of hard to pin down. I think that uh, it does make sense to stack against him here. So the Brewers, to me, the number three stack behind the Reds and the Guardians. It does help that the guys we'd want to include in the stack are now healthy. Willie Adamas being the key one there. But Christian Yelich has continued to trend up. His salary is 35, and I honestly think that's not high enough given how good he has looked. Um, I'm buying into it. The power is creeping up. He's stealing bases, all that stuff combining to make him, I think, a really fun play. Once again, for $3,500, Rowdy Telez, uh, pretty low salary, 27. I still think William Contreras will flash more upside here pretty soon. So even if the Brewers, like the Guardians, are not the deepest team, I do think we can stack them for sure. So to me, it's going to be the Reds 1, Guardians 2, Brewers 3, as far as the stack rankings for tonight. Again, makes it very easy to get to the stud pitcher of your choice. Things to watch on this Tuesday slate. The other value play I would think lots about is Dylan Cease. 
He's at home against the Rangers, which is a terrible matchup. Like they are real good against righties. Don't strike out a whole lot. But Cease is perking back up recently. He had 10 strikeouts on the road against the Dodgers last time out. And that spot was tougher than the one that he has tonight because it was on the road, whereas this one is at home. So Cease can do it. I just really hate this matchup, and I don't want to use guys facing the Rangers. I will definitely consider Cease at 86, but I did want to giving the slight edge to Lively just because the matchup for him is so much easier, and he is also at home. Yohan Oviedo absolutely mowed through the Cubs last week, and he's now facing them again. But that game was at Wrigley Field, and again, that was one of the wind games where the wind is blowing heavily in, lower temperatures, and now goes to Pittsburgh, and the temperatures are 80 degrees. Oviedo still letting up a lot of hard contact, so I don't hate the idea of using some Cubs against him tonight, given that Oviedo did just face them, uh, did very well there, but they've seen him now, better hitting conditions this time around, so I don't hate the idea of going at some Cubs there. One other spot to consider for stacks is the Padres. They're facing, facing Anthony DiSclefani, who's had some big issues recently. He's let up four-plus earned runs, three of his past five starts. And those did come against tougher teams, but the Padres are pretty tough, too. There's a lot of hard contact in that stretch for DiSclefani. It's a bad park for pitching in San Francisco, but they're at least viable for tonight. So the Giants, another offense to consider for stacks for tonight. Let's finish up here with the Dinger calls for today. Again, on this Dinger Tuesday, the boring one, Jose Ramirez. The max you can get as far as uh, refunds uh, on your Dinger bets is $25, $5 per home run, which means you get five. You can get a max of five home runs. Jose Ramirez might get there by himself based on what he has done at times this year. So the boring home run call, Jose Ramirez had a triple dong, I think, last week. Maybe we'll get a quintuple dong uh, this week. The fun one, Jake Fratley mentioned him before. Just coming off the IL, you know, this doesn't play well for a dinger bet, but like he does steal bases too. So from a DFS perspective, that's a nice bonus to have. So we'll go with Jose Ramirez and Jake Fratley as a dinger calls for this dinger Tuesday. That's all the time that we have here for today on the solo shot. As mentioned, we are back later on today, though, here on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed, breaking down uh, the Travelers Championship from a PGA DFS perspective. So if you want to play some golf uh, following last week's major, tune on in then later on today to get a breakdown of the Travelers Championship. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Wednesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.